Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt Podcast presented by Onyx. So what I wanted to go over today with specific to Onyx is the offline use feature. So what's great about using Onyx, especially on your cell phone, um, using the Hunt app, is that you're able to download maps for offline use. So what that basically means is when you have service or you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can choose map areas and it could depend. You can choose, you know, large areas and get smaller detail, or you could choose smaller areas and get a lot of detail. And what these do is you're able to use it on airplane mode. Your phone's not draining battery because it's searching for signal, but it works just like it would if you're in your house. So what I like to do, so I'm going out west and say I have six different areas scouted out from uh, using Onyx online to that I plan on, you know, hunting some backup spots, things like that. I'll go ahead of time and download these maps, these areas that I plan on going into, you know, making sure that I capture the road systems, the, the camping areas, anywhere I plan to access and hunt. And I'll download those ahead of time. So I go in there, I can use it, all my waypoints transfer over, and that's uh, one of the, the greatest features, I think, with this system by being able to, you know, drop, you know, carrying an extra GPS. I, I always do keep one in the truck with uh, one of the Onyx chips in there um, as far as backup, but um, right now I'm relying, you know, solely on the cell phone for that. And the offline use feature is huge for being able to do that. So Onyx is offering 20% off their Hunt app that would be good for 20% off with the code EMW. So you enter that in, whether that's in the your Apple Store or wherever or online or wherever you get your apps, enter in that code, save yourself 20% on the Hunt app. Also, the University of Elk Hunting, Corey Jacobson, and Elk 101 have put together the most comprehensive elk hunting course available, and I've been talking about this now for quite a while, and I want to uh, discuss a certain module in there, and that's the elk calling section. So, Corey has a series of videos teaching you how to use different calls, and specifically mouth calls that, that I like to use. And I've never been a huge mouth call guy when it comes to turkey hunting, things like that. Just, I don't know. It just didn't, I I was never really good at it. And what I realized was it was just more or less the technique that I was doing and just needed some more practice with it. So Corey starts out by teaching you how to do basic sounds and then how to put them together in sequences into cow calls, bugles, how to put some, you know, aggression and emotion into these calls and I think that part of the course is one that right now I'm going through and really practicing getting ready for the season, but it's really helpful. So if you use the code East Meets West, you'll save yourself 20% off the University of Elk Hunting. Head over to elk101.com to check that out. Maven Optics. So Maven has come out with the highest quality optics available at half the price of their competitors, half the price of those those really high-priced European optics companies, and they're able to do that with their direct-to-consumer business model. So I want to talk about their specific, their C-Series binoculars. So their C-Series is kind of their mid-level optics that uh, is one step below their B-Series, series, and it's more of a kind of a cost-effective option for you if you're looking to kind of you know just get into mavens and still not compromising on quality so now one of the the optics that my brother is actually using now this year he's going to be using for his uh september rifle mule deer hunt in colorado is their 10 by 50 so this is in their c-series binoculars and 
still has great low light capabilities, edge clarity, and their business leading, industry leading, no fault lifetime warranty. So even if it's your fault, they'll cover it, take care of you. And with their customer service team that they have there, it's uh it's a great option to check out. So if you want to look at Maven Optics, look at using the code East Meets West dash gift at checkout and get yourself a free gift with any full price optics option. And lastly, Heather's Choice. So Heather has come out with the basically the highest quality food available for the backcountry, for the traveler, for someone who just doesn't have time to pack their lunch at work, anything you can think of. They're dehydrated meals and snack options in their packaroons are so good and offer high quality fats and proteins that you need to be able to replenish your body after days of beating in the mountains or just not wanting to stop at the the McDonald's in the airport. So definitely check out Heather's Choice at heatherschoice.com and use the code East Meets West to get free shipping on any orders over $99. All right, let's get into some news here. So I just released today some new apparel. It's live on the website. I have two new Mountain Buck hats. So the first of the Mountain Buck series hat line that I'm releasing, they are in the Richardson, the famous Richardson quality fit. Uh, so I have one in the the 112 five panel design, and that's in a cardinal red and tan color with a brown and tan um, mountain bucks patch. And then also the six panel, it's a tri color uh, hat that's also a Richardson style as well. So both of those hats are available on the website along with something completely new, which is the Adventure Shirt Hoodie. So this is a, a hoodie that's, you know, made for, you know, summer nights when the, the sun's going down, but the temperature's still up and you and you don't want to get bit up by bugs and mosquitoes and everything else. So you need something that has long sleeves. This is a really lightweight material. It's a tri-blend, basically the same thing as our Mountain Buck and Rut Sash shirts, but in a hoodie design with some long sleeves on it to basically just, you know, create a barrier for your skin and and the elements and the bugs. I I really like this shirt a lot. So you go check that out on uh, the website. And what I'm doing is any order over $50 will get you a free premium on X hunt membership. So that's a $30 value with any orders over $50 as long as supplies last so check that out as um as these new items are up on the website and in stock currently so lastly before we get into today's episode with zach bouton from the hunting photographer i wanted to talk about my experience with the hunting photographer this online course that we'll be discussing So when I recorded this with Zach, it was just as I was starting to go into the, all the modules and go through the course. And I spent my own money on it. And as I say on here a lot, I believe in investing in yourself and knowledge that you can apply down the road because what's between your ears is something that doesn't leave you. When you buy material things, a lot of times, you know, the, the flash and the lust, they they go away over time. So I invested in the course and started going through the modules. And if someone's really serious about upping their photography game or potentially making this a full-time business, this course is has been really good for me. And, and I was part of the beta group, so giving a lot of feedback, you know, to Zach and Stephen Drake on on, you know, what you know my thoughts were or our thoughts were you know as far as uh the whole beta group and it's been super good and interactive and so the the course is is definitely one that takes a little bit of an investment and they offer three different payment plans with that to be able to to help you out but you know zach will say here in this episode about you know if if you can't find work based on the knowledge you get out of this course to pay for it then you're not trying very hard. And 
right away it's paid off for me. So this year I had mentioned I'm going to Idaho um, elk hunting. And one of the other members of the course, Justin Mueller, who had filmed for the TV show Become One, is going to be joining me on that hunt to film it. And not sure exactly what it's going to look like, but it looks like we're either going to put together a film for the Badlands Film Festival or, you know, maybe some daily vlog type updates. I'm not exactly sure. We haven't ironed out all the details yet, but it's looking like it's going to be a pretty uh, badass, you know, experience. And so this this course, I, I really couldn't recommend it enough. And I, and I told Zach from the beginning, you know, I'm going to give my honest feedback on it. And so far talking to everyone else that went through the course, the first uh, 15 of us that were beta testers, we, uh, we've we all had you know a similar mindset on it. And just being able to get that mentorship and the connections with you know other like-minded people that are trying to you know make it uh, for lack of better terms in this industry. it's 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 really cool. So really pumped about that and, and this whole this whole uh, course here and the podcast with Zach Bouton. And as I just mentioned with Idaho, so some things have changed up a little bit. I did just buy my tag, so it's official, 100% official now. I'm going to Idaho to hunt elk with also a mule deer tag in my pocket. And I'm what's really special about it is I'm going with two of uh, my good friends. So one of my friends, Michael Palladino, has been a lifelong friend of mine. I grew up with him, you know, from the time we were, you know, in kindergarten together. I graduated high school, college, and I'm really pumped to get to go with him. And the other is my cousin, Mason Martonic, who I experienced the first elk hunt I've ever did with Mason. And we're finally getting to hunt together again, you know, something other than whitetails. And heading out and I'm really really pumped about that I think we have a a really good group dynamic that you know will hopefully you know lead to some success so we're we're all going in with elk and deer tags and hopefully gonna have to stop by the nearest u-haul and pick up a trailer to haul back everything <laughs> well no just all, all joking aside i'm i am really pumped and, and confident about this this trip we're gonna you know work our asses off and hopefully come home with with uh a great experiences and this time some meat to put in the to put in the fridge and some antlers for the wall so all right i'm gonna stop rambling on here some more and and uh jump into the podcast here with zach bouton all right, we're live on another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast, and today I'm joined on the line by Zach Bouton. What's going on, man? Not much, Bo. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So what's uh, going on in Bozeman today? Uh, well, it's finally summer, like 75 and sunny, so can't complain about the weather, but just been jamming trying to get uh this new online photography course up and running called the hunting photographer and yeah dude not too much just working yeah did you guys get in a ton of rain out there like we are uh no but i think this weekend is supposed to be like back in the 40s and rainy so <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's uh, one <laughs> it does snow i'll be all right yeah yeah hopefully you're not getting any snow in june <laughs> no we will, I'm sure, somewhere in the mountains, but hopefully not down in town. Yeah, I gotcha. So anyway, Zach, I, what I wanted to uh, start off with is just kind of getting a little bit of a background on yourself. And I'm sure if uh, anyone's been kind of, you know, looking at hunting social media for a while and been on Instagram or online, they've heard of you through a different avenue. But I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man. Um so I've probably been hunting and fishing for about 10 years now. And I grew up skiing a bunch in the winter and lived on a golf course. So I golfed quite a bit, uh, growing up through high school and went to college for film. Uh, I've just loved ski film and, you know, back in late nineties and early two thousands, like every year 
the ski films that came out just got you hyped to go out and hit the mountain up and shred some pow and um so uh, i was kind of interested in getting involved with kind of ski film at least i thought at the time and then went to school for that and it just wasn't as hands-on as i wanted and kind of long story short didn't know what i wanted to do transferred to school so i was at school in bozeman here at montana state and i transferred to university of montana missoula which is where my brother travis was going to school and that's kind of when i started hunting and fishing and as soon as i did i was just blown away at like how rad you know the experiences were that i was having out hunting and fishing and wanted to share it and you know having a little bit of experience creating a little content around skiing we just kind of transferred that over and start a blog called Montana wild and long story short, like turned it into a full-time job, just creating outdoor media, um, film and photography for hunting and fishing brands and have been doing it since. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah. So what was, uh, I was talking to you before we got on here a little bit about the, the one film specifically that, that I own that I'd got from you guys. I loved it. It was in the Missouri river breaks. What was that one called? Yeah, it was called The Outlier. The Outlier, that was it. Yeah, those the films and stuff you guys put out. I, I'm not uh, much of a fly fisherman myself, but the the hunting ones that I've watched, were they were top-notch. They were kind of a little bit ahead of their times as far as the way that they were created. Yeah, the, <laughs> unfortunately, the hunting industry is always behind the times. Um <laughs> And the outlier was hands down my favorite project that I got to create and work on. It was like the first big full film that we created and got support from brands for and like kind of everything seemed to kind of fall into place. And I think I spent 30 days that fall out in the breaks during archery season, uh, both filming and hunting and like that was super cool just to spend that much time in a location where you really get to see how the animals and the landscape adapts and changes through a whole month. Um, cause usually you're out there for either a weekend or maybe a week and then you go home and then maybe you come back and stuff changes and you kind of wonder what happened in between and getting to be out there for that much time and documenting it all was awesome. And, we killed four bulls between the five of us. Um, one of them didn't make the cut for the film because our buddy Tyler McCann wasn't really part of the original script. But um, yeah, I was the only one that didn't kill one. I was hunting with the recurve that year and <laughs> spot uh, out the brakes. And stuff. I got close a couple times and just just kind of fell apart at the last second. But yeah, man, that was a film. Yeah, and what you're saying about spending that much time out there. At this past year in Colorado, I spent 14 days hunting, but there's a few extra days in there. And just seeing, like, even just the leaves changing as you're there and, you know, everything else and seeing as they go from, you know, early season to pre-rut and kind of a little bit into the rut there, it was just, it was really cool to kind of see everything change. Or I couldn't imagine 30 days of it. Yeah, uh, showers are few and far between, but <laughs> pretty used to it. Yeah, yeah, you feel pretty. You feel pretty deadly by the end. Well, you feel pretty deadly about like twenty days in, and then after that, if you haven't killed something by then, you're like, it kind of drags on. If you're, you know, feeling the pressure to shoot something, which I kind of was, considering we were making a film and everybody else had tagged out, and I'm still out there grinding, but uh it was it was awesome yeah that's funny so you uh so you and i uh kind of got connected here recently because i had well you had started a company called the hunting photographer correct yep yep and um so actually let's start off with you talking a little bit about what that is and i'll kind of go into what i was gonna say on the story there yeah so um over the years, just doing Montana Wild, we had offered some internships and worked with some younger guys who were hungry to get into the industry and shoot, you know, photography or film. And I'd always 
really enjoyed working with those interns or employees and kind of mentoring them. And then pretty much all of them went on to do their own thing and crush it. And, um, kind of as I've been pulling back a little bit from pushing like super hard on just hunting photography and film and exploring some other stuff, I was kind of like, you know, what are some of the takeaways for me that I really liked about it? And obviously being in the field and capturing the content is one of them. The other was like helping other people out. Um, and over the years we'd always been asked like, how do you do it? And you know, how have you guys done X, Y, Z? And that was always like our number one question. And for a couple of years I'd thought about, you know, ways to teach people some of what we knew. Um, I feel like with Montana wild, there's kind of a shelf life to some of that content. Like, kind of like friends like it, 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 the series ends at some point you know or like the office or any of this stuff like it just doesn't go on in perpetuity so at some point you know <laughs> you got kind of like say well you're gonna have to hang it up you know and so i was just kind of in this mindset of being able to teach other people some of what i knew and um i had some free time here at the first half of this year and i just kind of scripted out an idea for an online, you know, uh, hunting photography course and mentorship, and then just started crushing content and piecing it together. And I'm partnering up with Stephen Drake, who, if you guys are involved in, you know, hunting and social media, you've probably seen a lot of his work. He's an awesome photographer. And so, yeah, we're hopefully going to be launching, uh, the first group of students here this week, and uh, by the time this podcast comes out, we'll probably have ran through that first group and unsure if if we'll go into like just a public offering for everyone or if we'll have to do another like limited run of students. But in mid-July, uh, we'll be doing kind of our second run of the course. So it's pretty exciting, man. We got a ton of great applicants and like people are engaging with it really well so the the feedback and the response has been better than we thought it would be so we knew there was a need but it's kind of hard to know like how many people would actually sign up for something like this until you do it yeah and when i first saw it come out i don't remember if i saw it on your page or drake's page or whatever it was um you know i looked into it immediately and i signed up just for the email list online to learn more about it and when I saw that you were going to be doing that beta course, as far as the testing, I was like, I, I want a part of that, you know? So I submitted the, the, all the requirements to, to go in there. And, and luckily, you know, I was selected by you guys to, to be a part of that first run of, you know, people in the courses there. And I'm super pumped to do it. I mean, I think that's, I think what w- the sections that the modules that we'll kind of go into here a little bit that, that you're offering are things that people will really want to know because there's there's a ton of stuff out there on how to use a camera and how to you know all the settings stuff like that but the business side of it and everything else is just there's nothing out there on it yeah there's really no script or plan or anything if you just are like dude i want to be an even if it's an outdoor photographer not even a hunting photographer you know like how do i do it you know, it's like trial by error type deal. And that's how we learned. Um, and that's fine, but it's not the best way, you know, like there's, <laughs> there's better ways. And I don't, I don't see any issues. Some guys would be like, well, you're teaching everyone how to do it. Now everyone's going to do it. And it's like, no, that's basically like saying if you gave someone a brand new professional camera, they're now going to be a professional photographer. And that's far from the truth. You know, we're just giving people the skills. And it's up to each person what they choose to do with them. But, you know, already it's been really cool just to see some of the submissions and the videos and like people just, you know, a lot of it is people want to change their course of what they're doing with their life. You know, whether it's a job that they've been doing and they're sick of it and they just want to pursue their passion or they want to get more people outdoors through content. It's I'm pretty stoked to work with the students and you know i'll be even more stoked like six months down the line just to see where people have taken some of it yeah 
Yeah, that's what, and again, I, I've said this before on the podcast and um, when you invest in yourself on things, you know, as far as like with courses like this. So this past year I've, I've, uh, well, I've actually for a while I've been in the University of Elk Hunting with Corey Jacobson and now he's come on as a partner, but also like um, I've been doing the Mountain Tough Fitness stuff and, and some other different things. When you invest in yourself for these type of things, that's stuff that you don't lose. You know, if you go out and buy, say a, a new backpack or you buy a new this or that, that's like a physical product you're holding in hand that eventually that lust kind of goes away and it becomes outdated or whatever that might be. But when you put investing in yourself through education and learning and mentorship and, and just connecting with people, that stuff can only help you grow if you decide to do something with it. For sure. Yeah. I mean, Kind of regardless of what you do, most of your success in life comes from between your ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not the, you know, the tools help in whatever it is you're pursuing, but like if your mind's not in the right spot, then it's pretty tough to be successful. And yeah, education is huge and it never, it should never stop, you know, also. So, yeah, no. And, and what you were saying about, you know, people being like, oh, why are you giving out all this information? Think about it this way. So, and again, Corey and I talked about it on a recent podcast. We were, he's like, yeah, people were sending me nasty messages when I started doing videos on how to scout Idaho. And he's like, people, we've been, you know, putting out this content and, you know, there's things like go hunt now, everything else. And success rates have not went up. You know, it's just helping the people that want to really dedicate themselves to it. It's not going to just be like, oh, here's your free ticket. You're all of a sudden going to take all the clients and be, you know, professional photographer in the hunting industry by going through this course. You know, it just gives you the the information and tools to be able to figure it out if you're willing to put in the work. Sure. And I mean as a hunting photographer, if that's your sole occupation, you know, you're self-employed, you're running your own business. And so like there's most of the skills, you know, outside of the technical aspects of shooting photography is like transferable to other business ideas. Like you're not just this business module of our course isn't just like the things you learn aren't just applicable to being a photographer. Like some of them are specific to it, but a lot of the principles, um, would apply to anything like I'm doing some other business stuff and like what I've learned running my business with Montana wild and freelancing and stuff has just been key at least for my confidence to just take a new idea and run with it. So, yeah. And not just kind of falling into the, you know, the normal path that most people take. It just gives you that, that kind of, um, I guess foundation for being able to, to do more with it. And, and like, like I said to you before we started here too, you know, my plan by taking this course isn't to go, you know, full time as a freelance photographer. I want to use it to help benefit everything, you know, from the podcast to writing, having some better photos with that. And then the business side of it, that's all transferable, you know, across yeah. the board with anything that's, you know, being an entrepreneur or providing a service in any sort of way. So that, that for me was what, you know, caught my eye and was a lot of the interest in it. And not to mention just being able to connect with those like-minded people and, you know, be able to hopefully, you know, help each other out throughout the process. Yeah. Networking's huge. I mean, it's huge in any industry, but for sure in the hunting industry. So. Yeah. That's, I mean, the industry, the hunting industry really isn't that big. No, it's super small. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, so I, you know, I worked for an archery shop for a while and, and went to the ATA show through that and got to meet people. And it's funny, like, you know, I've went to three of them now. And when I go there, it's like, you run into the same people everywhere. It's the same, you know, it's once you put everybody in one building and for, you know, people that haven't been there, it's really not that big of an industry. And it's important to be able to, if you're trying to get into that, you know, to, to make those connections and just meet people and, and, you know, keep those good relationships. And, and the, the biggest thing that, that I've seen is, you know, 
helping others out. And, you know, eventually it comes back to helping you out as well, but helping everyone grow and not being selfish with it is, is super important. And it sounds like, you know, this is kind of your way of giving back, back to, you know, some of the success you've had with Montana wild and everything else. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be someone that comes up behind you. That's just as hungry as you are and they want to crush it. And like, I'm happy to, you know, kind of in theory, pass the torch on to some other people and everybody's unique in what they offer and what they do and how they see things. And so, you know, I mean, obviously I don't, but some people think they're, you know, the best thing out there and it's just not the case. And, um, you know, going back to the <clears throat> industry and it being small, like one thing with this course is there's not a lot of education out there on how to do it. And there are some talented individuals who want to do it and since it's so small you want to make a good impression at that first point of contact with a brand you know what i mean like if you come in looking like an ass and don't have your stuff together or you're super unprofessional and you just didn't know any better like with some people that might be like no like just not going to work with you or it might be a couple years before you change their perception of like who you are, where if that first time you talk to someone, like you've got it all or, uh, you know, put together at least fairly well, um, you're just starting from a way better foundation and like are going to kind of see progress a lot quicker, I think. So, yeah. And so like, so today you had sent out, uh, the information to the beta group and everything. And one of the first exercises had to do with, you know, following everyone else that's in this on Instagram and sending three people a message. Yeah. And so I, I did that today and I've had some great conversations with people already. And that's, you know, that's connections right there. That's starting, you know, those conversations and, and, you know, most of these people I didn't know. And I started looking at their pages. I'm like, dang, these guys are talented, you know, already with photography and everything else and just kind of hearing their unique stories, you know, so if I message three people and then, you know, another person's messaging three people, you end up talking to just about everybody. And, uh, that's, that's a really cool, I, I like that idea that you had at the beginning there. Yeah, I think it, it's changing, but I know when I started, dude, it was ultra competitive, dude. Like, dudes that were both content creators or photographers like they wouldn't talk they wouldn't they were super secretive about everything they did and like it was super cutthroat and like that's not how it should be like everybody should be more uh like friendly with each other and willing to collaborate and just network um there's just a lot of opportunities that end up coming up in places that you'd never expect or people have like very shared interests that sometimes can be tough to understand. I mean, the great thing about social media is that you get to kind of impact other people in certain ways, whether that's inspiring them or educating them or even, you know, pissing them off. But the thing that sucks about it is that we've programmed ourselves to create um, an idea of who we think people are based off of their profiles. And 99% of the time, like it's a wrong perception of who that individual is. It usually takes like an actual conversation of like getting to know that person where you're like, Oh, like that's who, you know, this yeah. person, is. like they just posted this little bit of their life, you know, or whatever. Um, the highlights. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. So it's like, you never know. Like, I've just, you know, I'm always friendly with everybody I meet and like, I feel like someone, everyone has something to offer, whether like, you know, it's something that you can understand at that point in time, but just getting to know people is, is awesome. So yeah, hopefully with this class, I mean, it's a good idea to network regardless, but with this class, hopefully some of the students that will go through it, will be able to kind of learn together and, and you know, someone might learn something or have an idea about something or a question and if they can bounce that off them or maybe there's a project that two people work on that opens some doors. I mean, I don't know. I think it's just good to connect with like-minded individuals. 
Yep. Yeah. And again, that was the other part of this course that had really interested me was that just the, just the mentorship and the connections with people. Cause that, you know, I've learned is the biggest thing in this industry specifically. And I'm sure, and you know, many others, but just having that network and, you know, being kind to everyone else and trying to help them out. And it, it all comes back around when, uh, when you do that kind of stuff. So yeah, I thought that I thought that part was cool. I mean, social media gets a bad rap a lot of times, but if you use it right, I think you, it's like it's an, an amazing thing. Yeah, and like, I mean, just making those connections, it's just you're just becoming a better people person. And a lot of like the jobs that you get in this industry is about like making a connection with someone with the right person that in the right position at the right brand. You know what I mean? And the better you are at like starting a conversation and creating a relationship with someone, just the easier it is going to be for you to get work. You know, if you're really reclusive and aren't comfortable, you know, reaching out to someone you don't know and just sparking up a conversation and being likable, it's going to be a little bit tough. And so, you know, every chance you get to practice that skill set, even though you're not like going into it like, oh, I'm going to practice how to like talk to someone. It's just like you just talk to more people and you get better at it. You know, it's like the mindset of I just want to meet more cool people. Yep. Uh, it does translate to your business. So for sure. So with this course, what I guess we talked about a little bit here, but who who is this like specifically designed for as far as um people that are into hunting and photography or what, what kind of people do you have in mind for that? Um, I mean, it can be a lot of people, but the two people that, you know, I had like in my head, um, was kind of like, I, I called it the professional hobbyist and is the guy that like really likes photography and like does it, but they probably haven't ever sold a photo or tried to get a job. And like, maybe they're, you know, talented with the camera. Um, but they haven't like made that leap of faith to like pursue it as, um, as a career path. And so hopefully this course will give them kind of the skills and the knowledge and most importantly, the confidence to take what they've learned with the camera and translate it into like making it a career and an occupation and making money doing it. Um, and then the second person I had in mind was like, I called it the driven new guy. And this is kind of the person that they've obviously never pursued photography professionally. And maybe they've taken a few photos, maybe they haven't, but like they think in their head that they really want to do it. And so for that person, it would do one of two things. Either one, they're going to be like, wow, this is awesome. And I for sure want to take this path. And it gives them the skills to really get the ball rolling or too it's like whoa you know social media put it like this and and this is the reality of it and like that just isn't a fit for me and so you know some people will get two to five years down the line they'll be like oh this isn't for me and so for some of the guys that are like coming out of college and haven't really pursued something or, or even in high school you know um it can give them a good concept of what this job and this career is like and you know some people know where they want to be in 10 years and they can you know match it up with this and say is this a fit and you know for some people it's a perfect fit for other people it's for sure like a no so you know hopefully for a fairly minimal investment in the scheme of life you know they would have a good idea if it's something they want to pursue or not and they'll learn stuff out of it regardless that's applicable to life in general but yeah. And like I said earlier, investing in yourself is such a, such a big deal. And even if you take two things out of it, then it's a win, you know, it's, it's, that's just something that I've come to learn a little bit is anything that you can do to invest in yourself is, is going to help you out in the long run somewhere, some way you might not see it right up front, but it will. Absolutely. And so w with this course, and you had said it's basically a month long course. Is that how long, you know, it should take you to complete it? Yeah, we're going to learn how long it takes students to complete <laughs> it. But there's, 40, there's 42 lessons. Um, I mean, I haven't totaled the 
amount of hours of video. I know it's for sure over 20. Um, I'm thinking that it'll take most people like three to five weeks. I mean, if you had nothing going on and wanted to jam through it in one week, you could. If you wanted to take three months, you know, I mean, that's the beauty of uh, making all the content in a video format. You know, we'll have uh, downloadable audio from the video with each class. Um, and then obviously some text documents and some written words. Um, but people are going to be able to take it at their own pace, you know, so it fits people's schedules. Um, it's not restrictive in the fact of like, Hey, you got to be here for two days and we're going to try to cramp everything in, in two days. And we hope you remember it. You know, it's like, you'll be able to come back to it. Um, and then we offer that mentorship element, which allows us to give you like our personal advice and thoughts regarding each student and where they're at and what their goals are. And like, you know, there's just certain things that uh, having a mentor give you some advice on as far as your own personal situation that I think will be huge. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're shooting, you know, to answer your original question, we're shooting for like kind of like a roughly a 30 day period. Okay. And how so. is that course broken down? You were saying there was about 42 lessons and are those each of those lessons something different topic or how does that fit? Yeah, that was um uh, that took quite a bit of time at the beginning to rough out kind of all the different pieces of being a hunting photographer and there's a lot of them and then how do you structure those in kind of like cohesive groups that go together? Um, and so we kind of settled on basically five modules and it kind of, there is kind of some flow. We start out with the first module is like the foundational stuff. Um, and that's, you know, starting out with why do you want to shoot hunting photos? Like, what's your why what's your reason for doing it um because that's super important and that helps set your course as a photographer and it helps you know give you kind of a mission and a goal for the work that you do um and then you know we want to ask people like do you just want to shoot hunting images or do you want to shoot other things like let's kind of build a foundation of what it is that you want to do before we go you know jump into the deep end um and then we kind of go through, you know, internships and mentorships, which are great ways to get uh, your career and like get your feet wet. Um, and then we break down the lifestyle and the industry and kind of just give people kind of a ask, make them ask themselves some questions in their heads and give them a little kind of idea of what the lifestyle and this whole career looks like. Um I mean, it's kind of like school. You kind of start out with those basic foundational courses and then you start working into the meat of it. So uh, that's the first module. The second one is shooting and editing. So we just talk about, you know, some keys to hunting photography, some of the thought behind what we do and how we do it. Um, it's not very heavy on how to operate a camera because at the end of the day, being a professional hunting photographer, like you don't get jobs because you're just a badass with a camera. Like there's a thousand people that are awesome with a camera. You know, it's, it's really all the other things outside of it. And it, some of it has to do with, you know, your, it goes back to your why, like why do you create images as a hunting photographer and like how do those work with brands and like the business side of it and networking is probably more important than actually pressing the shutter. Um, so we talk probably more about how we go about thinking about hunting photography. Um, I guess one thing that I learned pretty quickly working with younger guys who are just starting out is like, they didn't think through the process. <laughs> they just were like, I want to shoot cool photos. And they went out and they just pressed the shutter a bunch and they never thought about like, what do I want to shoot? How do I want to shoot it? And like, why do I want to shoot it? Like, why does it make sense? And so we spent quite a bit of time just talking more about like framing your mind 
uh, in a certain way so that when you go out and shoot photos, hopefully you come back with more like quality content that's actually usable. And then, um, obviously as a hunting photographer, Adobe Lightroom is like your best friend. So we go through that pretty extensively. Um, third module is gear. Hold on one sec. I do want to ask, you know, uh, at least make a comment on that module two there. So that's something that I remember my first year when I went out to Colorado, I was talking to you about a little bit, um, ahead of this, but I did not, I didn't have a way of carrying my camera like outside. I always had it in my pack and then I got back and I'm like, well, shit, you know, I don't have the, (laughs) all there's all these cool shots or maybe the the weather was a little bit bad and it would have been made for some cool, you know, uh, photos, getting some emotion and some other things in it, but I'd never had my camera on me. So, you know, having a plan for doing that. and, And I know one of the things I'm looking it, you know, getting out of this course and everything is like how to kind of put together, you know, a shot list things you should be looking at that you want to capture because once you get out there, you forget about what you thought about ahead of time and you might miss it or, oh, I'm going to get, you know, this later and it doesn't, doesn't happen. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that's something. We definitely dive into the pre-planning and shot lists and we don't always take our own advice, but the theory is sound. And when you do do work at a time, it always pays off. <laughs> yeah. And then even with Lightroom, you know, I use Lightroom and, and had watched one of Drake's videos on file management and stuff. But I, I think that part is really important too. Uh, you know, I, I struggle with keeping things backed up when I should and all this other stuff and keeping things organized to the part where, say you are working for a client or whatever and you have photos that might work for it, but you can't find them, mm-hmm. you, you know? So that, I think that yeah, part's you, important. You want to be efficient. But yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Lightroom's not, it's not complicated, but there's a lot of like tips and tricks and little things that just speed it all up. Gotcha. So now on to the next module gear that you're talking about. Yeah, gear, it's like three lessons and it's it's really nothing crazy because as a hunting photographer, like you really don't need that much. Like if you go on a 10 day hunt, you're going to carry some extra stuff, but uh, really like having your camera in hand is the most important thing (laughs) in hunting photography because it's it's not scripted out. It's not a studio setting. Um, So we kind of go through, you know, what a basic kit would be that, you know, that would be something either that I take on the most basic day out shooting photos or like what you might want to have getting started and then talk about a little advanced gear and we talk about you know travel gear and things that you want to have or think about when you do travel uh on shoots but um people get pretty wrapped up uh in gear and gear questions and it's just a tool uh you know, you can shoot great images with all kinds of different equipment and gear and there's not like one best strategy for that stuff. So, you know, we tell people what we use and how we use it, but we hope that I would never encourage someone just to copy or buy exactly what someone else has. Again, it comes back to like in your head, like what do you want your tool to do? for you like how do you want to shoot what are the images you want to shoot like what's the gear that you need for that like make it fit to what you want you know not the other way around so i'm always like well you know people are like what camera should i get i'm like dude i can't i have no idea what camera you should get. <laughs> I know what some really good ones are but at the end of the day you have to think about what are you shooting and what's the best tool for that so yeah no, I, I understand and it's, so after that, you get into a, another module, which is business, correct? Yeah. Um, the fourth module is business. This is the biggest one. And it's for me, I feel like there's the most value in the business module, at least for the people that want to take um, and pursue it as a profession, just because this is really the meat of it. And Um, this is where you're going to have probably the most questions starting out. Um, photography stuff, you can learn and figure that out pretty well, but the business side of it, uh, is pretty tough. 
either to get people to share and teach you that or to learn. Um, and so we pretty much go through just about everything that you either need to know or think about or figure out to start your own business as a photographer and, you know, have a brand and run it successfully. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there from just starting your business and what are the documentation and the things that you need to do to actually have a legitimate business and how do you position your brand and do you need a portfolio or a website? Like, how do you grow your brand? How do you, you know, price images and your day rates? How do you find brands? How do you, you know, pitch projects to brands once you've made contact with them? Like, how do you do a contract when you've pitched a, a big project and they're like, yeah, we want to do it. And <laughs> how do you invoice and how do you get paid? You know, like, um, we talk about image releases and photo and video permits and getting your drone certification and attorneys. And I mean, I feel like we touch on just about everything that for the most part you're going to need to know or think about at some point. Yeah. That's something that you, I, again, that was, has been my biggest struggle on a little bit of a different side with the podcast, but trying to learn all that stuff. And it's, it can be a frustrating thing. And I think for a lot of people, that could be a reason why they don't make a jump because they don't understand it. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of this stuff, you know, we talk about how we do it and like it, some of it comes down to just like a thought process, you know, like finding brands and proposals. <laughs> There's no one right way to do it. Like we talk about how we do it and maybe how to think about going about doing it. But like, let's say you, you know, started talking to brand X and they're stoked on your work and you pitch them a idea or a project and they're like, yeah, it's rad. Like, you know, let's do it. You know, how do you navigate some of those steps? You know, like how did you pitch the project in the first place? And like, what are the things that that person wants to be able to understand when they get that proposal? And, you know, it's, there's so much in there. It's, it's hard to really top it, talk about it in much depth without like breaking it down into a very small piece. Yeah. But that I, for me, I think that section is going to hold a ton of value and, like I said, and that's, that's, I mean, there's no questions asked that part right there specifically is fully transferable to whatever you would do in, in uh business in, yeah, in life today <laughs> comes down to like understanding a, your business, how should you run it? And like, B, like how do these other businesses operate and what do they value? At the end of the day, it's all about value. Like if you can bring value to a brand and provide them like they're going to think about paying you as an investment. And if you can double or triple or quadruple or 10 X their money by working with you it should be a no brainer, you know? And like, you just have to be able to think about a lot of this from their perspective and like leverage your skills in a way that like gets them stoked to work with you, you know? And like that just comes back down to understanding their business and maybe doing some research on who they are and like what they value and what they've done in the past and like what are they doing in the future and like how would you fit into that picture and the more questions you can answer for them you know just by your interactions like the better like at the end of the day a lot of these people are super busy and the easier you can make their job the more likable you are and the more they're like yeah let's work with that dude he's super easy and dialed in on everything you know so yeah, I mean, th I mean, think about it. Like, I think that's the, one of the most misunderstood parts of of this whole thing, and e not not even just with photography, but when you look at you know an age when you know everyone wants to be on a pro staff or whatever it is for a company. You know, I've gotten some messages before from people being like, "Oh, dude, how did you get on with Prime? Or how how did this work?" I'm like, "No, it's." right off the bat, you're looking at it from the wrong way. You know, you have to figure out how you're providing value. You know, they're not there just to make, make you, they're, they're there to make money and to make money off of whatever your services or your value is. And I think that's so misunderstood. And I think if, you know, people can understand that a little bit more, 
that that be on a little bit better path and and that also comes down to what your why is for it and if you're in it for the right or wrong reasons for sure i mean that's what makes the work rewarding is when you can come in and like understand the brand and what they actually need and you're like yeah i crush it at that and you go and you go on your project on your shoot and you crush and what you delivered to them actually works and provides value and grows the company like it should be a mutually beneficial relationship where the business is giving you work and you're delivering value that grows the business you know and those are the best relationships for sure yeah yep and so i guess after the business module you have one last module on there can you talk a little bit about that yeah, we talk about social media and we focus just on Instagram. Um, a lot of the uh, ideas and concepts would transfer to Facebook and other platforms. But in our opinion, um, just to Drake and myself, Instagram's hands down the best platform as a photographer to invest the most time in. And so we break it down, you know, A, how to get going on Instagram, like the basics, because I see a lot of people making some mistakes in how they manage and approach their Instagram profile. Uh, again, there's not like one strategy that's the best strategy, but there's definitely some things you probably shouldn't do, or, or at least there's some things you should think about before you start going crazy on your social media page. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, we just talk about a lot of tips and tricks and advice and just, you know, things that you're going to encounter in, in running a page on social media. Uh, we talk about some of our workflow of posting images and how we manage what we post to social media. And then, uh, I wrap it up just showing kind of my workflow of how I would, um, export and post a video to Instagram just because, even though we're photographers, I mean, I do a ton of video work and Drake does more now. It's like you should utilize video for sure in some capacity. And so at least knowing how to do it correctly is helpful. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to learning about the video portion of it as well. I think that's, that's something that, uh, makes you more well-rounded too. Yeah. And Something I'll probably do that'll be probably early next year is I think I'm going to create a whole course on my process of editing a film and going through all of that. Uh, I mean, we get a ton of questions and I there's really not great information on how to go and make a film or an edit or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I would say that I have equally as much experience, if not more in that realm. So, um, that might be something that I'm going to offer down the road, kind of as a companion to this. Nice. So basically you just put that out there and now you have to do it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, I feel like that's something that, uh, is harder to learn the skills of the photography stuff's pretty explanatory. And yeah, there's a lot of information about video, but, um, there's just a lot of things out there in the filmmaking world that don't apply to like just making a hunting film. So yeah, <laughs> what do you got going on there now? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> my stupid truck, man. So <laughs> I don't know if there's a sensor or. <laughs> Or something on one of my doors. Do my alarm will just randomly go off. I'm not cutting that out, by the way. That's good. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, it doesn't go off at night and wake me up. But I'm like, dude, I really don't want to take it to the dealership and pay him a bunch of money to try to figure it out. But hopefully I'm not hunting like too close to my truck this fall and have that go off because that would be a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, that might. <laughs> I'm like, always, I always have my keys close by because I got so sick of like hearing it go through its full cycle and wondering where my keys are at. So That's hilarious. <laughs> so um, as far as, okay, so you kind of covered the modules there. 
Now, where I think a lot of the the value of this course lies is in the part where the mentorship with the instructor instructors so yourself and with Stephen drake so talk a little bit about what what is this mentorship this one-on-one mentorship that you have yeah so the, i mean the one-on-one mentorship it'll either be like a 30 or 60 minute window and you know we either jump on the phone or jump on skype or whatever and just fire away whatever you want to talk about you know whether you have questions about something we taught Uh, whether there's a skill you want to dive deeper into and try to learn better, or maybe you have an upcoming project or an idea and you want some feedback, or you want us to just talk through some images with you that you shot and how to make them better. I mean, whatever it is, the time we offer is a way for you to just use us as a sounding board. Um, And I think, I mean, I think, 100% of the value is like just in the mentorship. You know, I think, uh, you know, pricing the course was a tough thing, but for me, it's like a hands down, no brainer. Like I think it should be priced a lot higher, but, uh, it's tough to price stuff like this and get people to understand it. I mean, if you went through this course and could not easily recoup your investment, like you're just not doing it right. You know, like this should allow you to get a multitude of jobs that would easily pay this off. And I think just that, just the one-on-one mentorship time of getting that experience and that advice of like, Hey, think about this or, Hey, tweak this. Hey, do this a little different or, Hey, here's a tip. Here's how I do it. Like some of that stuff is just going to save you so much like headache. And for the people that are driven, it's just going to, allow them to just like ramp up uh, their progression a lot quicker than they would on their own. Yeah. That, that I think, like I said, I think that's a huge part of it and it's, it's not very often and you know, everyone's extremely busy now and everything else. And it's tough to, you know, connect with people, you know, like yourself or, or Drake or anybody else that's, you know, cause they're extreme, you guys are extremely busy and, and so is everyone else. So, and, mm-hmm. and to be honest, I mean, I don't know if it's this way for you, but you you might get questions from people that that want to talk through something that they may not be extremely serious about it. And it's hard to gauge that, you know, and then, you know, you might want to help someone out. But if they're not serious about it, you got to look at your own time and know when to say no, I guess. Yeah, this is I mean, I've helped plenty of people just who have reached out to me, but this is a way for me to invest time in those who are investing time in themselves. And, you know, even in the past, when people have asked advice, you know, I'd always at least respond. But the people that showed uh, a willingness and a want, you know, to, to learn and to better themselves, I help them out in a heartbeat. The people that just were lazy and asked some half-assed question and I could tell had not put the time or effort in, you know, most of the time I just say, hey, I'm super busy, you know, a couple sentences maybe. You know, the other people I'd dive deeper in, but yeah, I mean, we're all super busy. Time is our most valuable resource and so um, the course and the one-on-one mentorship time is just a great way to really invest and people who are willing to invest in themselves. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree on that, that side of it. And, and again, I think that's where, you know, it's, it's easy to see when, when it comes to the, the dollar amount that the course costs that where a lot of the value comes into it, you know, for sure. Yeah. People are going to spend this much, if not more for like a two day course and they're not going to cover all this and it's going to be packed into kind of very quick and dirty uh few days i mean the hands-on part is cool uh but you know this allows you to really absorb stuff and think about it and not feel rushed through things i mean i don't care how smart you are you go do two days of whatever and you're not going to remember all of it so yep and and so like in my, my current career field and what I do, you know, I train people a lot and that's why I always keep it in smaller sections because if I sit there and talk to someone for eight hours, that would cover a year's worth of, you know, annual training, they, they'll get a little bit out of it and that's it. But if I split it up and, 
you know, 12, 30 minute courses or, or whatever it might be that how that figures out, then they're able to retain that, you know, retain that information rather than throwing it all at one time when it becomes information overload. And as you get to do this and you play around, you think about it and you, you know, ask questions or, or whatever else it is, you can get to sink in a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, the cool part is, is there's no timeline on the mentorship time you get and you get, you get four hours total. You get two hours with me and two hours with Drake. Like that's a lot of time to ask a lot of questions. And like, if you want to just save that time up and, you know, as you need it, uh, hit us up. You know, I mean, obviously we have to schedule the time. It's not like you just call us whenever willy nilly, but, um, you know, if you want to save three hours of your time for six or 12 months down the road, when you hit a roadblock and need some like really solid advice, like it's pretty unique that we're, it, it, it is a literal mentorship. I mean, it has a limited window, you know, obviously some of the students will stay in contact with and, you know, certain people, um, are better at that than others. You know, like some of my interns I've stayed in really good contact with and others I haven't. And that's just different personalities and how people operate. But, um, the one-on-one mentorships huge and yeah, we're letting people dictate how they want to take advantage of it. So I think there's a ton of value there. Yeah. I, um, so a lot of the reason too, that I thought this would fit the audience of East meets West and everything is my, my slogan is kind of, how do you define ad- adventure? And that can be in a variety of things and even outside of hunting. And this, you know, even goes into, you know, adventure of life and how you kind of want to live it. And, you know, going through something like this could absolutely without being dramatic about it, but change the course of your life and, you know, pursue something that you really are passionate about. If you love, you know, photography and inspiring people and, and helping others like that's, this is where, again, that it jumped out at me and I was like, that's a, that's a no brainer with it. Yeah. Um, it is a sweet profession because you do get to alter people's lives. I mean, I don't know how many people I've met in Bozeman. They're like, yeah, dude, I lived in Virginia, Vermont. I watched your stuff and I moved out to Montana. <laughs> <laughs> like that's super cool, man. Like obviously it changed the course of their life. And, um, I mean, it kind of comes back to social media. You can impart some pretty awesome, uh, influence and kind of inspiration out there you know, with other people who will follow you and follow your work. And that's why we want you to create like a solid why, because if you have a why and you tell a good story, um, with your work and like, it just goes so much further than just saying, Oh, that's a cool photo. that's going to get me likes on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know, you're able to learn how to kind of tell the whole story rather than just, you know, the, the one trophy photo, which I think they're important too, but just the, being able to tell everything in the background of it. Yeah. Um, can you hear that music in the background? No, I can't. Okay. Freaking a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having roommates, man. They're just jamming music and <laughs> yeah, you got, you got a lot going on there. Going off and I probably your worst, uh, distractive podcast guest. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'll just I'll just throw this one out. <laughs> yeah, just get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, but anyway, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped that that uh, you guys came out with this course, and you know you built this course up for, to help everyone and give back. And and I'm just I'm ecstatic to go through it as I'm starting this next week. And but by the time this podcast airs, I had most likely have already went through it, and we'll give some kind of feedback on it, and most likely just tear up Zach and in the intro. So. Yeah, you have ruined my whole course. Yeah, <laughs> dude, dude, so bad. No, <clears throat> the cool part is when we should do another podcast in like six months. Is it'll be really cool after this fall to have some testimonials and be able to show some of the tangible results of you know people going through the course and taking the skills that they learned and applying them. You know, right now we can't really do that with what we're specifically teaching. I mean, I can point to the people that have worked, uh, with me as interns or I've mentored them or have worked with me. I mean, 
you know, guys like Calvin Connor, he's out there on his own crushing it. Sam Averett's full-time freelancing and crushing it. Uh, Keith Ailes is out there crushing it. He's the main video guy for Mountain Ops. So, I mean, I personally have just some, you know, case studies of guys I've worked with who, you know, I don't attribute their success to me, but I helped just kind of progress where they were at a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, it's cool to to look back on that and be like, well, this is where they came from and this is where they're at. So hopefully in six months we'll have some more of that yeah, no, directly I'm, from I'm, and can like point to that and show a little bit more of like, here's why you invest in yourself and you try to speed up the process, you know, so that you can get to this point quicker. Yep. And if there's one thing that, that I could say on that is so many people, people say that oh i wish they could do that or this it's out there you just got to do it you got to want it bad enough and and you know put yourself in the right places and and you know invest in yourself in in the right places and do it that's the same way with when i talk to people about planning a trip out west you just got to do it you got to jump and and take some of those calculated risks with it yeah that's for sure the big thing i mean when i was in college i wrote a business plan for a tv show <laughs> uh <laughs> for montana wild which we never after i did that business plan i was like tv's a joke i'm never doing that but <laughs> i remember when we sat in class and we all had to come up with some business ideas and i you know told the class what my idea you know my number one idea was and it was this outdoor tv show and there were a couple other guys sitting in my class and like yeah, dude, we filmed a lot of our hunts, man. That's pretty easy. I mean, that's not that unique. And I was just like, <laughs> dude, I don't think you realize the level of work and like what it actually takes. And like, you're never going to actually do that. Yeah. You know, a lot of it is like, okay, like this seems scary, but I just need to like take a calculated risk. You know, like, yes, just even doing this course, you know, there was risk involved. Like, or how are people going to receive it? Was I going to be able to piece it all together? Like blah, blah, blah. Like that's anything in life. Like there's always something scary that goes along with it. But at some point you kind of got to pull the trigger and just go do stuff or else, you know, you're just going to be stagnant and like probably be unhappy with where you're at in life. Yep. I mean, that's, it's the same thing with, with me and the podcast. It was one of them things I just kept thinking about, kept thinking about. And then finally one day I'm like, screw it. I'm doing it. Like I know that, that this is something I can potentially help a ton of people, you know, get to experience the West and get to experience, you know, adventure hunting, even in the Appalachian mountains and, and looking at it from a different perspective. And it's a huge risk putting yourself out there, but it's one that can be so rewarding at the same time. And, and I just strongly urge anybody, if it is something that interests you, that you should really look at doing it. Yeah. And I mean, you definitely have to invest in it. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that our current society and the way people are raised, yeah, at least with the younger demographic, they want things instantaneously. And I'm sure you've experienced this. I've experienced it, this like just about anything you want to be good at is a multi-year process. You know what I mean? Like it's not just, it doesn't just happen. You don't just go shoot a few cool photos and now you're a photographer. Like it takes a lot of hard work. You know, like we started off where we had a part-time job. Like you have a job outside the podcast, you know, like eventually that might transition. But when you start, like be willing to be hungry and crush for a while before you start to feel like you made it. Yeah, and be willing for a lot of long days and, and long nights and everything else, and it's going to feel like it's not worth it at some point. But if it's something you really want, you just, you just got to keep doing it. And that's – I always laugh, and I don't mean to go on a tangent here, but, like, so there's people that will start that are just, like, say they're great hunters and they're they're pretty good at storytelling, but they just started up an Instagram account. And they're like, oh, man, I'll never, you know, grow to where everyone else is and stuff like that. And it's like, dude, that doesn't happen overnight. Like, no. that takes years of, you know, putting out good stuff and just, you know, continuing to connect with people and this and that to, to do that. It's just nothing is that's, you know, worth having just comes to you. No. And that's, 
I mean, that kind of goes back to that original, like, why are you doing it? Because if you're doing it for the right reasons, if you have a solid foundation for why you want to pursue this, it's so much easier to be driven and have that passion. If you just want to make it to get into the industry and get likes and, you know, feed your ego, like, dude, you're going to fall on your face. Yeah. It's going to be a struggle. Yep. You know, like you need to provide value to other people. You need to have that why and that mindset of like, this is why I do this. Like, this is my goal with my work. Yep. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, it's, it's okay to like say, Oh, I want to work in the hunting industry, but you got to have the, the right reasons behind what you're doing to get there. It's like you said, there's Mm -hmm. no shortcut to it there. And people will see right through that if you're fake in any sort of way. Absolutely. Well, cool, Zach. I think, uh, I think we covered a bunch. Is there anything else that you want to, to, uh, leave some last words about the course or anything? Um, not really. I mean, if you go to the hunting photographer.com, you can get a bunch of information on the course and what we're up to on social media. It's at the hunting photog. Um, so yeah, I mean, people can find us pretty easily. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, after this first beta group be running either, uh, additional runs of limited spots, uh, each month, or we'll be opening it up to the public. We kind of got to gauge how much time it takes us to work with each student, but yeah, man, we're stoked to just continue to work and guide people and hopefully enhance, um, their career and their lifestyle and their lives. So it's, it's cool. I mean, just watching the application videos, I'm already stoked. And like, (laughs) even, even the people that I like, responded to and said dude you didn't make they're like yeah this just fuels the fire you know like so it's it's been super cool oh that's awesome that's that's good to hear man so where can people find some more information on the hunting photographer and and yourself to kind of be able to get a little bit of a background here yeah like i said just uh the hunting photographer.com is our website and then uh the hunting photog is on social media if you guys want to follow me, it's just my first and last name at Zach Bouton. And, uh, yeah. Cool. That's, uh, I think that that covers it there, Zach. I appreciate you coming on here and then also for giving me the opportunity to, to go through the first run of the course here. And, and, uh, just like I said, super, super pumped about the idea. Yeah, absolutely. One last thing I guess I'll mention is For those who are on the fence and are really considering this as something they want to pursue, um, you will have to kind of build a body of work before you can kind of jump into the realm of trying to get jobs. And so, you know, if you're on the fence, it might be a good thing to go through the course that you can really utilize your time in the field this fall so that next year when contracts and people are looking to get jobs and stuff like you're already dialed in. It's tough to just jump into the mix without saying, hey, here's my portfolio. Here's stuff I've shot. Like people, you know, when they hire someone, they want to know that they're reliable and they're going to be able to fulfill what they say they are. So sometimes building that body of work takes more time than people think. And so um, now in the summer is a good time to make that conscious decision that, yeah, if I haven't shot a lot of photos this fall, I want to go out there. I want to try to shoot a lot, see if I like it. If I do, I'll have an awesome body of work. And then in 2020, I can just jump head first in and take the plunge. So, yep. Like you said, time takes time, no matter what it is. Absolutely, man. Cool. All right, Zach. Well, again, thanks for coming on and I'm pumped to work with you. Yeah, dude. Stoked. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.